Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. They offer free checking with industry-leading mobile banking. Who you choose to bank with can make all the difference. Visit firstbank.com to learn more. Good morning, Hokie Nation. Happy Monday. We got the whole football crew on set as Virginia Tech comes back to Blacksburg after falling on the road 39-17, to the final score against fifth-ranked Florida State down in Tallahassee. We're going to break it all down for you and talk so much more Virginia Tech football. It's episode 318 of the Tech Sideline Podcast, and it starts right now. Welcome in once again, Hokies fans. We record on Monday, October 9th, 2023 from our high-tech studios at the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and go ahead and refer a friend as well to the show. Time to introduce our football crew. To my right, as always, lean analyst and columnist Chris Coleman. Across the way, senior staff writer Andy Bitter. In the fourth chair, it's the man, the myth, the legend, David Cunningham, our managing editor. And behind the scenes, the mustache man producing, Mr. Nick Brown. I'm Giovanni Heater, your host, and... Fellas, let's talk a little bit of football here. First and foremost, though, we got to tell everybody that Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Hokie Way. In their second year in operation, the Hokie Way thanks Virginia Tech fans for their support of their mission to leverage student athletes' name, image, and likeness in support of charitable organizations. To learn more about us and the organizations that we support, visit thehokieway.org. All right, fellas, I want to I want to start here and ask you guys instant reactions to Saturday's game in Tallahassee. Uh, some good, some bad. Uh, you know, the good thing is, you know, I think it proves Jalen Lane and Bishaw Tootin are really, really good players. Uh, I think we already thought that before, but I think that game confirmed it. I mean, obviously, Tootin's kickoff return, but then those two catches that Lane had were pretty incredible on the negative um, I think it confirmed that uh, the pit offense is absolutely dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> and Virginia Tech's run defense is a lot more Rutgers and Marshall th- than it was Pitt. Um, if you look at the top two backs for Florida State, they combined for 11 carries, or excuse me, 17 carries for 250 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, imagine if Florida State had actually given them the ball like uh, more than 17 times. I mean, it's it's insane to me that actually Florida State wasted the entire second quarter throwing the football when when they were running it like they were. Um, but at any rate, I, I, Tech obviously, Tech's rush defense, it can get better, but, you know, six games in, it hasn't with the exception of the pit game, and that was more pit. Um, Tech's run defense is going to have to get fixed in the off season. It's not going to be an in-season quick turnaround um it's going to be a lot of new faces on the interior of that defense next year i expect you're going to see at least two transfer portal defensive tackles because you, you could lose as many as four defensive tackles off this team like four of your first five and i i don't think they're going to go into next season with the current situation at mike linebacker i don't think you can afford to so it'll be a lot of new faces there next year um so that's my initial takeaways from the game yeah, I, I wrote in my five thoughts afterwards, I stole the Dennis Green line. The Hokies are who we thought they were. I mean, that's sort of what we thought. You know, everybody said how wrong we were in the pit game. We were ba- we were right on everything in this Florida <laughs> State game. We said, yeah. hey, I think they'll cover. I think they'll stick around. I think Florida State might get bored, but I, I just don't think Virginia Tech is in the same class as, Virgin- as Florida State right now. And we saw that in the game. I mean, they race out to that start 22 nothing. You can't have a worse start than that and it it felt like the old Hokies from earlier this season bad start can't stop the run yeah they hung around they fought a little bit you know Brent Price saying afterwards you know we played them toe to toe 17-17 after that first quarter it's like well you played them to a tie when they were up by 22 already the other team is maybe not giving the maximum effort when they're up by 22 so I don't know if I necessarily buy into that whole line of reasoning but it just kind of showed that you know the Hokies are not a ready for primetime team yet uh, and in a way, you know, you know, Hokies fans probably don't want to hear this. You know, that game doesn't matter. Like the game that matters that's more important to the season is coming up this week, Wake Forest, not to get ahead of ourselves on this whole thing, because that's a team you can actually beat. You were never going to beat Florida State. That's a team 
uh, further along in its rebuild, you know, way way ahead of Virginia Tech from a talent perspective, and just where the program is. Where you're at right now is to to be, you know, can you beat a Wake Forest team that's rebuilding itself at home? Want to dive a little bit more uh, into that tough start for Virginia Tech and kind of stay there with you, Andy. Uh, so Florida State comes out, boom, 13 play, 75 yard drive. Looked like the fifth ranked team in the country at that point. Then they go seven plays, 66 yards, seven plays, 45 yards. All meanwhile, Virginia Tech goes three and out, three and out, three and out. What just kind of sputtered early on, especially in the first quarter for the Hokies? Everything. <laughs> there was there was like no silver lining and like, oh, they, you know, bowed up in the red zone or something like that. Uh, you know, there was one play where Kelly lost. And I, th- I think that was in the first quarter where Kelly lost and had a chance at a pick. Yes. Uh, yeah. Drop that. That would have been big. And, you know, Brent Price said afterwards, like, can you hold him to 13, 14, 15? Because they convert that two point conversion where, you know, Tech might have been a little bit asleep uh, when they do that weird formation coming out of that thing. So, uh, you know, it was just every aspect of the team. I mean, they, they didn't get a first down in the first quarter. That hadn't happened. You know, David sent it to me during the game. Hadn't happened since 2014 against Pitt. Uh, so we're talking about almost 10 years uh, that that hadn't happened. Uh, defense just provided no, uh, you know, resistance whatsoever. Florida State ran. I think they ran it for a 98 and threw for 100. I mean, it was in the air. It was on the ground. It was anything they wanted to do. Chris Tech, said it would be balanced. Yeah, Tech yeah, Tech wasn't tackling. You know, there was that play where uh, Toa Feely, like, rolled over Delane and Stroman into the end zone. I mean, a great individual play, but just an example of not getting the guy on the ground and, and maybe preventing them from getting a touchdown. Just uh, whatever the Hokies thought they had done to sort of shore up those slow starts. And they started fast against Marshall with a the touchdown. They started fast against Pitt with a touchdown. Uh, they just reverted back to the old ways. And I know Florida state's a good team, but y- you can't show up and just no show a quarter like that. Just you're, you're done before the game even gets going. Uncomplimentary football. I would, that's how I would describe the first quarter. Um, obviously, you know, if you go through the defense, like it's not even there. Uh, Florida State did but at the same time like Tech's offense didn't help any you know no first downs in the first quarter but you know what do we talk about like like last week Virginia Tech only passed it 19 times they were run heavy and then they come out this game when the defense just allows a 13 play 75 yard drive that took almost six minutes off the clock the Tech Tech offense comes out and goes pass 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 first three plays of the game and an overall five of their first six plays of the game were pass plays. They came out with the idea that they were going to pass the ball on Florida State. After, and Virginia Tech is outside the top 100 in yards per attempt, quarterback rating, uh, per completion percentage, all of that. Drones is outside the top 100 and all of that. Tech cannot pass the football unless they establish the run first, but they came out pass happy. They, when they, especially when they, at that point, they needed to keep Florida State off the field. The Tech defense needed to regroup. Um, in a game where Tech ended up averaging six yards a carry. Correct. Like, like and te- had over, te- te- had te- over 200 yards. Tech eventually figured it out. Hey, we need to run the football uh, because they ended up, you know, running it a lot more than, than they passed it in this game. But they came out five of their first six plays uh, passing. And I even think it was something like nine of their first 12 or, or, or something like that were pass plays. So, uh, after they got down by a bunch of points is when they decided yeah, we should probably run the football because it's going to get even worse if we keep trying to pass it. But I, I, I think they, they needed to come out uh, again. You know, Tootin only eight carries in this game. He's, he's, he's your best offensive player. He needs to touch the ball 20 times a game in, in some way, shape, or form, in, in my opinion. And, and so they, you know, they, they made a concerted effort to get it to him in the, in the passing game. And obviously he had the kickoff return. But, but overall, just you know, just not enough touches for a guy like that. If you want any hope at all of going on the road and pulling off an upset, your best player has to, has to ha- have more. Uh, all right, so, so, so ideally, Baishel Tootin has as many or more carries as Kyron Drones has passes. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen when you're getting blown out to a certain extent. But Tech came out. It's like they weren't not even interested in making those numbers add up. I mean, last week we saw Drones throw it 19 times, and I think Tootin had, what, 24 He had carries. like 28 or 29 28 touches. touches. 28 touches, yeah. right. And, uh, you know, Drones, Drones had to throw it 27 times. Uh, 
some of that, of course, is because of the score line. But again, like I just said, they came out and threw it on five of their first six plays before the game became a blowout. So it seems to me like the strategy from the very beginning on offense was off. Yeah. Not necessarily the scheme itself, just but how you implemented the scheme. Chris, yeah, I think the the how the game went is one thing. Also, Tootin did take a big shot he did. in that fourth did. quarter. Yeah. Uh, just got blown up on that mm-hmm. uh, swing pass. I, I don't think he was concussed because he came back into the game, uh, but maybe a little limited because of that. So I, I think I need to buy you one of those. We've got the red shirt uh, thing right <laughs> above your head. I think I need to buy you one of those trucker hats to say run the damn ball. My dad, <laughs> that that would just the be guy perfect. in the crowd with the sign that says my dad says run the ball. Yeah, I, th- <laughs> I think we need that. At least maybe we can put it on the set somewhere. Uh, that'd be perfect for it. You seen that clip in the blind side? Enough with the trick plays, Bert. Run the dang ball. <laughs> Chris, you you asked on the first three possessions, which Tech went three and out on all three. Tech, ran, Tech threw the ball seven times and ran it twice. Mm-hmm. And then on, the, then on that next possession, which Tech scored a touchdown on, Tech threw it twice and ran it five times. Right. And there was a scramble in there, but, but still at the same time, you're right. Like they came out the first quarter and tried to lean on their weaknesses as football team instead of leaning on their strength. On that uh on that second on that touchdown drive right before the end of the half, six that 16 play 70 yard drive, 10 runs to six passes. Mm-hmm. And after that, the only drive the only drive where Tech had there were two drives where Tech had more passes than rushes um and one of them was in the fourth quarter, and one of them was in the third quarter. Um, but at that point, Tech's playing from behind them. Yeah. You know? But uh, yeah, uh, I I think your your point is is valid in that you know when Tech comes out and and runs the ball and it's a or tries to pass the ball and it's an incomplete pass, one yard pass, incomplete pass, punt, and then it's a mm-hmm. five. Tech ran the ball on the fourth play from scrimmage, and it was a five yard gain. Yeah. And then Tech threw two passes and had to punt again. Right. Right. Um, you know, I picked this game, I think I picked it 30, 38 to 20, my final score. So 39 to 17 is pretty, pretty close good. to that. So, so the end result is what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting to win. What I wanted to do is improve or in, I wanted to look like you had the right idea of how to go about getting the victory. I wanted to, I wanted to not revert to Marshall Rutgers level of run defense. And I wanted to continue to pound the rock and just be a run first team from the very get go, just like Pitt, like understanding, like this is what we need to do to have the best chance to win. And they didn't do either one of these things in this game, so that's the disappointing part to me. It's that they're not going to be able to stop the run this year. Halfway through the season, they are who they are, and it's not probably not going to can change each week based on matchups, things like this. But let's face it, this is either. In my lifetime, it's either this defense or the 2018 defense that is the worst run-stopping defense at Virginia Tech that I've ever seen. Um, so it is what it is at this point. Well, I was talking with Teal. Uh, we were driving back to Jacksonville after the game, and we're like, you know, run fits and run defense problems like this are week one problems, yeah. not week six. Right. You know, like this is this right. is not like, oh, we're ironing some things out. We, we, you know, guys in different spots. And, you know, I know they've had injuries at safety that have really impacted this team on the back end. And People's back this week. Yeah, though. a little bit. I don't think he looked uh, like himself back yeah, there. And then sure. Jalen Stroman, you lose him with a targeting penalty. So, uh, you know, some fresh faces at safety back there. But then this is something that, as I said before, I mean, a lot of linebackers coaches on this staff. A lot of guys who have coached that position, played that position, who should know what you need to get out of that position. They're just not getting that right now. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I feel like it is more on the back end than the, the front. I think the front could play better. But, man, some of those plays, I mean, these guys are not getting touched till they're 20 yards down the field. Like, yeah. how, how does nobody get in those gaps? And Florida State had some excellent blocking mm-hmm. on those plays. They were wiping guys out. But you got to put up some kind of effort. You got to at least touch them before they're 20 yards down the field. You're you're dead to rights if that's the case. Yeah. I mean, we talked about before the game, how good uh, Trey Benson was at breaking tackles and he didn't actually didn't have to break all that. (laughs) The two long ones. I (laughs) think somebody maybe got like a a hand on his back as he was uh, (laughs) racing down the field. But there's another one that the, the 85 yarder at the end, nobody touched him. Yeah. I mean, he was just, he was just gone. Yeah. And uh, you know, there were, there was one, there was an arguable hold on Tisdale on that play, but the thing is, Tisdale for a middle linebacker was so far off the line of scrimmage that you're like, even if they'd called the hold, you're still not impressed with the play if I'm a defensive coach because my middle linebacker was, 
you know, not attacking, not in attack mode. It's, it's just there's so many things wrong with that right now. And I don't think it'll get fixed in the middle of the season. It'll be a lot better against Wake Forest, I think, because they're struggling on offense this year. They've really struggled to replace their quarterback. Um, but, you know, there will be other teams this year that I'm not saying it's anybody, anybody's going to do what Florida State did, per se. But it's just a bad run-stopping defense. What, what I want to see now is you got to go back in the opposite direction on offense. You can't come out next game and pass, pass, pass you know, run, pass, pass, first six plays of the game. You have to lean on your strength. And that was that's my issue with this game offensively for Virginia Tech is, you know, they ended up with more runs than passes, of course, once they figured it out. It's like, I don't know how you can come out of the pit game and think we should just come out and pass, try to pass all over Florida State from the very beginning of the game. It just seems the opposite of what you should do to me. So that was the disappointing part for, for, for me. Like the score line was pretty much right on with what I expected and, and everything like that. Um, I, I'm just, I, I thought I saw last week against Pitt a very clear vision of what Virginia Tech needed to do schematically and strategically from a play selection standpoint. And, you know, I think the scheme was fine against Florida State, but I like the understanding of how to apply the scheme and how much you need to run, how much you need to pass with Kyron Drones as your quarterback, I thought they botched that up, and that disappoints me. Also didn't really take any shots early, and that's kind of what worked against Pitt. A couple of downfield shots early yeah. is what got the juices flowing a little well, bit. Well, they, they tried. It was like a reverse flea flicker. Was, that was really cool. And but that was late in the second. Right, yeah, that was in the second quarter. They had a reverse flea flicker, and I forget who they threw it to on that play. They threw Daquan yeah, right. 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 double right. coverage, but Felton was, was open. wide open. Yeah. Felton yeah. was middle. coming to open across, and you know, uh, Drones got the ball, and he immediately looked in Wright's direction, threw it, and I think if he had taken just a beat, he would have seen Felton coming open, uh, and they. Did they score on that drive? I can't remember. I don't remember. remember if they scored on that I drive. I think or not. that is the drive they did, they where they got a, a field goal. Maybe? Was that the field goal? That was drive? the field goal. That was a touchdown. Was a touchdown. Okay, so, so in they the end, scored it a touchdown matter. anyway. Yeah. But I mean, they they did take a shot, and they did have a shot that came open early. So yeah. it's not like those opportunities weren't there early in the game. They just didn't hit on them. Yeah, right. uh, twenty seven attempts for one hundred four yards in the passing game, which I believe was three point nine yards per attempt, and I think that was third or fourth worst of any team in college football this week. And uh, Virginia Tech overall, the last four games, like, like, look, we knew when the quarterback switch happened that one quarterback had his strengths and weaknesses and another quarterback had his strengths and weaknesses. Drones makes the, uh, the running game better, without a doubt, but he's also, from a passing game perspective, outside the top 100 in completion percentage, yards per attempt, and quarterback rating. So it's just not an efficient passing game. I mean, even against Marshall, 4.4 yards per attempt, and they threw it 35 times, right? So that's mm. so it's, but it's not just drones. It's like he played a much more effective game when he was used properly, and he was in a situation where he didn't have to throw it as much, and uh, and he was under pressure a lot. He was, he was yeah, yeah. yeah, ten but, pressures in that game, and yeah. he made a couple of plays where. You know, he, he escaped with his legs. He, he had that fourth down completion yeah. to Gaznell that uh, got wiped out, uh, which I don't know how Gaznell caught that pass. <sighs> that would have been a sports And then they play, backed maybe. it up to fourth and 22, and he almost got it by himself yeah. on the run. Maybe got it? I don't know. They said I, they reviewed it. Everybody's like, oh, they, they probably needs to challenge that. Probably asked the officials to look at it, and they said they did, and they confirmed the call. So okay. I don't know if they had a, a better TV angle <laughs> or than what we saw. It was kind of tough to see from the angle, but uh, – they didn't really. Yeah, Jones did do some stuff with his legs to to help the passing game a little bit. I think. Yeah, he definitely. Did. He had that uh, what forty yard run, and that was yeah, on that a jump scramble, wasn't thing. it? Yeah, that yeah. jump started things. Well, so yeah. let's go to that drive a little bit. I kept kind of saying on the broadcast, boy, all of a sudden this sweep of momentum uh, because the, you, you end up having Florida State. You force them to go three and out. You end that drive with a sack. Uh, then you go down the field. You score a touchdown yourself. And we just kind of kept saying. What if they got seven instead of three, right? You had that long run by Kyron. You had this nice, beautiful drive going. You get the ball all the way to the 10. Then, honestly, smart timeout um, by Mike Norvell at, at one point. And uh, then you go three plays, nothing going. And then you end up kicking a field goal from the 10. I mean, I mean it was something. I don't remember the sequence of plays after that. Um, but you needed to stop the mo momentum. The big thing is the Tech offense kept the ball for a little while there and let the defense get off the field. Um, that was, uh, I thought that was important. That ended up being an eight play, 76 yard drive that took four minutes, two seconds off the clock. And that was, uh, you know, four minutes that were desperately needed by the defense because they were, they were kind of reeling yeah. at that point. That was the type of drive you needed 
in the first, early in the, in the first, first quarter. quarter. Yeah, 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 especially after that first drive. And uh, but yeah, it was sorely needed at that point. Um, yeah, I think at that point Tech just needed points on the board, and Tech yeah, needed yeah. needed to sustain a drive to like give the defense a breather after the defense was on the field for almost ten minutes. The defense was on the field for ten minutes, and the offense was on there for maybe three and a half. Like you just got to get your guys a, a breather. Tech goes down and gets a field goal, and like Andy said, that forty yard run kind of just sparked something, and then all of a sudden. Tech, again, kicked a field goal, but then Tech comes out on the next drive and starts to move the ball, and even though that flea flicker didn't connect, that was, like, the first time all day where we, like, saw a consistent sign of offense. 16 plays, 70 yards that bit off 6 minutes and 55 seconds. That might be the best drive of the year, That's probably. probably and from- three fourth down conversions. Yeah. Uh, yes. Right. They were very aggressive. On that. They had a couple of the uh, brotherly the, the drones pushes. I don't know. Are we calling it a tush push? Have we decided that's the... Uh, I, I like brotherly shove, but we're brotherly not Brotherly shove. No, that's, that is pretty good. Okay. Yeah, came that. But they had another conversion in there. I thought that's the, the mindset they had to have. Was that okay? And first of all, you're down 19 at that point. You got to do something to get back into it. You got to maximize every drive, but uh, you know, keep the clock moving, keep Florida State off the field. I mean, that, that quarter it was 126 yards to one. They completely flipped the script in that second quarter. So they found something there. We're pretty successful. Needed fourth downs because they couldn't convert a third down to save their life. They were 0 for 9 to start the game. Uh, ended up 2 for 13, and that pretty bad. Uh, by the Hokies there, but they made up for it with the fourth down conversions, kept the drive going, got points, and, and man, you thought they had a chance there when Tootin comes out of the second half with that big kick return. You couldn't have written up the whole uh, double dipping any better. The fact that you score, give them such a little amount of time, then you get to sack two, and they just kind of wave the white flag and like, all right, time for halftime. And then you kick return for a touchdown. Like, you couldn't have double dipped any better. And Tech has not always been great at that, like, final eight, the middle eight of the game where they yeah. have to do something well before the half and then come out of the half really strong. I remember last year writing about that. They'd struggled for a couple times with that. So to see them do that well and get back in, it was, it was pretty refreshing. So was it two touchdowns in a span of four plays with Basically, halftime in between, yeah. something like that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, that second quarter was big. Florida State had the ball 11 minutes and 11 seconds in the first quarter. And then, you know, wow. and then in the second quarter only had it four minutes and three seconds. So. Tech had a, won the time of possession battle, for whatever that's worth. Here's your one of the oddest stats you'll ever see. Virginia Tech converted more fourth downs than they did third yeah. downs in this game. They were 3 of 4 on fourth down and 2 of 13 on third down. You, don't, it, you don't see and that And it's not often. like they had unmanageable third downs. Like, right. there were some that were really long, sure. but they had... They had a couple. Uh, they they were, were, like, third like, short. Yeah, I think four of them were five yards or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, one drones got pushed, and they fumbled the ball and went back. Tech had four third and less than three and only converted one. Interesting. Okay, yeah. Yeah, That's it's a problem crazy. spot for them this game. Yeah. I thought they did run the ball a little bit better on that, that last drive before the halftime break because Malachi Thomas started it with a 12-yard run. That was his longest of the year. Um, and then there was one I remember in particular, a big, uh, I want to say it was third down, and... They ran it, and Basial Tootin grabbed eight. So he set up fourth yeah. and two. Maybe it was second down. That was and he second grabbed and eight. ten. Second and ten. And then so Tech got third eight. and short. Yeah, yeah. So there were a couple of good longer run plays. And refreshing to see Malachi Thomas finally get going. That was his, he, he had yeah. not uh, Best done game. much this season. I think he had 100 yards coming into the game, so 58 on the the workload that he had the other day. And a couple uh, catches for 23 yards yeah, also. Yeah, I'm probably keep saying, you know, we got this one-two punch. It's really just been one punch <laughs> so yeah. far this year and uh, frequently used punch uh, with Tootin. They haven't had really that uh, rushing attack they'd hope to have all year. So, that, yeah, if you're looking for encouraging signs, I think that's something that was refreshing from this. So you return the kick, and then all of a sudden the wind just comes out of the sails. As Florida State has that long run. Like, immediately you just kind of felt like, oh, well, it was fun while it lasted. It was like Rutgers all over again. Like, yes. as soon as you feel like you're getting momentum, boom, there, there's a long run. And uh, it was definitely a here-we-go-again moment um so yeah like everybody else it's 22 17 you're like okay you got the momentum you never know what's going to happen at this point florida state did nothing offensively in the second quarter uh we have all the momentum in this game you're thinking if you're a tech fan um and then no one play and then it was all over just odd it was like 22 nothing florida state then 17 nothing virginia tech then 17 nothing florida state that's been that's been our season though that's been virginia tech season to this point like purdue same type of thing yeah yeah that's what i was gonna say it's funny because the purdue game and the Rutgers game were similar things tech goes down early 
17-17 in at the end of the third quarter. And then Purdue scores to end the game. And then Tech, well, you know, Tech couldn't score in the fourth quarter. Tech cut it to five at Rutgers, 21-16. Tech cuts it to five in this game. And Tech cut it to five at the beginning of the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Like those games, it was like, you know, end of the third quarter, early fourth quarter. And was like, okay, maybe Tech can do something. But this is like the opening kickoff of the second half. Tech has all the momentum in the world. And then Tech's defense kind of just falls apart on one play. Well, I'll say Florida State's fans were stunned based on the TV broadcast, the cut to that guy. <laughs> that was, that was, was a Tech, tech fan. That was a Tech fan. That was a Tech fan. Oh, it was a Tech the, fan? Yeah. The guy who like, looked really shocked. Yeah. The yeah. fans around him were Florida State fans, but okay. he was actually a Tech fan. Yeah. Well, that was the feeling in the stadium that they got back into that game. Yeah. But then to, to give – I mean, Pry has said this a number of times. It's like – you just got to get a, get the uh, running back on the ground. Like you give up a big play that's twelve yards. Like okay, it's a first down. You live and die on the next play after that. But he goes sixty two. I think it was after a, a quick 62. pass to a quick pass to Johnny Wilson. Where Johnny Wilson got hurt on that play and did not uh, return. So I, you know, uh, furthermore, you go hey, you could get back in this game. They don't have one of their big offensive weapons there. But then you give up the big run. I mean, it seemed like every time Benson touched the ball, he was just racing down the field, and, and there's nothing Tech could do. And that's such a de- <laughs> it's such a demoralizing feeling. Because you work so hard and you you, you know chop your way back in. Now, obviously, a big big play by Tootin helps that along. But to to cut it back and get get back within five, then it's, it's gone in one play. It's like all that work and it's it's dissipated in a second like that. You know, it's, 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 Tech even did that when they beat Pittsburgh. Like you go, you take the early lead, you got the momentum, and then boom, you give up the huge touchdown pass on the first play. And then it, you know in the second half you get the you get the fumble and a quick touchdown and then what it's it's twenty eight seven you're gonna go on and blow them out, and then boom Pitt hits the screen pass for a long touchdown and then they get the fumble and then they're back right back in the game so Tech has had an issue with that even when they've won, of like you've captured the momentum you got them right where you want them and then the defense just allows a massive play it's we're halfway through the season it is most definitely a trend at this point five runs that they've allowed of 50 or more yards this year uh, that that's incredible. only one team has allowed more and that was marshall marshall and marshall basically allowed it all against odu in that game they gave up and so many long runs in that game and tech decided to not run it against marshall <laughs> but anyway yeah this is why you need to run the damn ball run the damn ball man come on um the two touchdowns for florida state in the second half here were the drives. Two plays, 75 yards, 28 seconds. One play, 85 yards, 11 seconds. So that's three plays for, what, 160 yards? and uh, Or no, more than that. I can't do math. No, anyway, I guess it's 160. Yeah, 160. In 39 seconds. That, that's pretty efficient offense. Yeah, I'd say so. I got to give credit where credit's due to Chris as well. You know, we had talked about... Um, who's going to be the bigger target, Keon Coleman or Johnny Wilson. And uh, it was part of our buy, seller hold, which we're going to get to in just a second, where Chris was like, oh, I think they're going to hold Keon Coleman under 60 because they're going to go to Johnny oh, Wilson all right. day. I forgot about that. One. Wilson was the leading receiver for the team in yards and catches heading into that game, but had yet to score a touchdown. Keon Coleman was kind of their touchdown guy. Well, Wilson scores two touchdowns, then gets knocked out of the game. He scored two touchdowns in the first quarter. So... Per usual, Chris was right on that one. I don't know. That was just a random guess yeah. on my part. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no special skills there. Well, let's go ahead and uh, go into this buy, sell, or hold results a little bit because uh, last time we did not, and people in the comments were, we're saying. We're keeping score yeah, on I know. This? Oh, they, man. They, they, they wanted to, well, not necessarily keeping score, just if things hit because it was called for in the comments. We got to all the about what accountability they want. on this yeah. show. Yes. Um, so. First and foremost, Tech scores first in the game. We know that did not happen. No, it did not. Uh, Tech wins the first quarter. Absolutely <laughs> not. That did not happen. Uh, Twenty-two to nothing. They lost and the I first s- quarter. I assume we all said we all sold on those. I believe. Yeah, so. Did you write these down as we're going? That's that's part of the account. That, that, that's that's. I think that's the step that's we the need to take step. this week, and I take responsibility <laughs> yeah. for that. I'll try to remember what I said. We'll okay. get a graphic up there, a bit, yes. like a chart that says who said what. Yes, we definitely have to invest in this if it's going to get this 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 much. Maybe we even clip that part for Twitter, like the buy, sell, or hold part. But uh, Tech is within 10 at halftime. That was a no. Uh, tech scores 20 or more points. That was also a no. That you guys did oh, a couple. Oh, of you oh, guys no, did I, say I would have said bye yeah. because I had them scoring right at twenty. Right, Andy, I think said they 20 were close. As well. If they could have scored a point in the offensive point in the second half, they didn't yeah. score any point. It was just the, right. the kick return. Yeah, right. yeah. 
Tech covers at plus 23 and a half. They did do that. Yeah. And I think we all said we they were going to cover that. That's, that's, that's yeah. really all that matters. That, yeah. The winning ticket that, right that's there. Right. That's true. You know, they, they have that uh, good teams win, great teams cover. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> tech throws for 175 yards or more. Uh, you guys said no. And no, no, no. I said you the said over. Because, because they were going to they were gonna be behind and they were going to have to throw a lot. And they did throw a lot uh, 27 times, but they only threw for 104 yards. That's, that's the lowest amount of uh, passing yards Florida State has allowed this year. Even Southern Miss, uh, who Florida State beat 66-13, to 13, threw for more yards than, than Virginia Tech. 3.9 yards per attempt is yeah. not going to get not, the job done. Yeah, it's, it's not an efficient way to go about your your business on offense. You guys said that Tech would not run for 125 or more, and they did not uh, I think I said. That. I, I did think, you? I think I said slightly over. I okay, said, I said under on that one. I yeah. thought you had said uh, under because I, I thought I said you said that you, they were going to be forced to pass. So I apologize. I think Chris. I said slightly over. Okay, yeah. but uh, but I, it was it ended up being way over. Well, this one I know you said that he would throw more than eighteen times. Kyron drones that is um, because he's, again you go back to they were going to have to. He did. He threw twenty seven times mm-hmm. uh, on Saturday. Uh, drones goes turnover free. You bought that or no? I think you did buy that. I want to say you bought that. Did I? Okay. And I sold that one. I thought he'd throw a pick. And he, he didn't throw. Did, it, but he got did. Rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of got bailed out of that one. But at the he same time, he also it, fumbled. It, it, and to be fair, it was kind, yeah. it was kind of unlucky on his interception because, like Felton was like falling out of bounds on that play, and he was throwing it over there. And uh, well, did for, Felton just fall out of bounds by himself? I, I, mean, I, I think he got I, pushed out of yeah, bounds. Yeah, right, right. It had, to, it, it had to have been something like that. Um, uh, and it wasn't clear to me on the replay when he, when he first threw it, and I I just saw the interception. I'm like. There's literally nobody within 30 yards of him. What is he doing? And then they showed the replay, and, you know, there's Felton going out of bounds. Um, well, despi- but in, oh, in the end, yes, turnover free game. Yeah, despite a fumble and a, that was recovered by Virginia Tech, I think Tucker Holloway fell on top of it. Or did he fall Felton, on top? Felton, Felton got it. Holloway fell on a later one, the Bryce Duke fumble, mm-hmm. I think, on the yes, last drive. you're right. Um, so Jordan Travis uh, looks back to 100% out of the bye. I'd say so. It looks pretty good. He looked shifty back Wait a minute. There. Yeah, Tech, he did. Tech fumbled on that last drive, and Florida State recovered. No, they fumbled twice. Bryce Duke fumbled, then Chance Black fumbled. Y- yeah. yeah, and Black fumbled, and Florida State recovered it. Right. right. But we're, we're saying Bryce drones. Duke fumbled. We're saying drones. drones was right. turnover we would have free. a turnover for you. Right. Yeah. Uh, Tech holds Keon Coleman to under 60 yards through the air. They did, indeed, hold hmm. uh, Keon Coleman. It's 22. He had yeah. a big punt return, though. He did have he did. an yeah. impact on the game. It was about a, what, 30, 30 something. Yeah. Biggest punt returner in college football since James Mitchell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there you go. Florida State uh, only throws the ball 21 times. Their lowest was 24 at Boston College. They matched that. Um, they threw it 24 times exactly once again. Um, they yeah. did run the ball a lot. They only did throw it 24 I think, times. Yeah, I they, see 25, 25 throws. I think eventually score. they figured out after th- they got a little pass happy there in the second quarter. I think they figured out in the second half, you know what, let's just go ahead and keep giving our running backs the ball. Seems a lot to be of those, the best way. You know, Travis took off and ru- ran. He did. I yeah. don't know if those were designed runs all the time, but right. he is uh, an electric runner, and he must have played baseball because he knows how to slide and get <laughs> down, although he didn't quite slide completely on that play where Stroman hit Got him, him. Yeah. at the end of it, and it yeah. was kind of like, was he sliding? Was it so... One of those type plays. You just can't get near the quarterback. That's the bottom line. You got to teach Kyron how to slide. He kind of took a lick when he went down at the 10. It's just kind of a awkward the way he just like fell down. It's you not know? natural for 234 pound quarterbacks to want to slide. No. Like he would have rather put his shoulder down for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it, this goes back to Chris's point before the show. He said, don't look at the ESPN box score. Look at the Virginia Tech, the Hokie Sports Stats box score because ESPN says he threw 24 times. Andy, you got 25 over there, and I got 25, I see 25 on the 25 on the box score right here. So ESPN is wrong. Okay. So this matters wait a in buy hold. So it does. We're, so we're talking about Jordan. Oh, Jordan. Tate, Tate uh, Rudemaker threw a pass. Oh, that, is that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. it is 24. Oh, well, they, they threw it 24 but, for 25 well, you're, times. You're the question was Jordan Travis himself, or wasn't it? No, it's, it said Florida Will State Florida only State throws th- the ball 20. So, okay. so, it, so he's right at 20. So I have a winning ticket. Pay me my money. And, and, <laughs> That's and, what I want to hear. And ESPN is not wrong. I just looked at Jordan Travis's right, passing. Right. Um, so let's see. Florida State, five or more plays with 20 or more yards. That did not hit. They only had four. Mm. Tech so, had two. Do you count the David? punt return? 
I guess we could. Yeah, we, that was I guess from now on we need to specify. I know you meant offensive, but I guess we should specify from now on. I think sure. it should only be offensive. No, when, you, when you give up an 85-yard touchdown, that should count as four of them. But doesn't it feel like four so, yard runs. Doesn't it feel like that they had more than four plays? It did. Well, because <laughs> they had a 68-yarder and a no, correct, you know, One of them was 85. Right. So, Like I said, that should count as four. Yeah, four 20-yard right. runs. <laughs> Well, it was as demoralizing as like three touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So three of their four plays of twenty or more yards were touchdown plays. Twenty-eight yard rush, sixty-two yard rush, eighty-five yard rush. Tech two or more sacks. That did hit. They had two. Two on the spot. Um, let's see who had it. Narell Pollard had one, and the other one was Mario Kendricks. I want to see. CJ McCray. Uh, CJ McCray. McCray okay. Uh, Tech wins. No. <laughs> so that, that was the results of our buy seller hold next week i will do a better job marking which one of you guys said what we'll get our faces in a chart we'll put it up on the tv screen we should yes. start to probably think of this like before the season starts next year yes yeah yeah huh. we're doing it on the fly there, we're like yeah. we're like text rushing we're defense we're yeah. trying to figure it out <laughs> yeah yeah there's potential there's unlocked potential here an untapped potential and we'll uh try and kind of get to the to the hang of it here uh let's go to david in the fourth chair d Connor, you got anything for us yeah uh Virginia Tech, fewest passing yards in the Brent Pry era. What nice. was the last time Virginia Tech threw for less than 100 yards? I mean, this was 104. Okay. The last time Virginia Tech threw for fewer than what they threw for on Saturday it's, was. It's, it's got to be that Boston, Boston College, College game in 2021. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tech threw for 73 <laughs> yards. Right, and I bet before that was the the Pitt game in like 2015 nope. when it rained really hard. There was hard. one game in between. No kidding. Mm, I don't. That, what I can't imagine. It was uh, the UNC, game. the UNC Hurricane, Hurricane game. game yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That Boston College game. Oh, Spurmeister goes down and Kadem goes in, and I don't think they pat, completed like one pass before the half, I think, or something was, like that. It was, it was really late ugly. in the half. That yeah. was brutal. Uh, question: uh, Any short-term fixes to drones passing grip release points? If drones get his accuracy up, like just just a tiny yeah. adjustments, how much would that help? I mean, it would help. Uh, the thing is, like, his two, his two completions that were, like, really inaccurate the other day were actually both actually caught. Like, Jalen Lane catching the okay. one that was grazing the grass and then also the one-handed catch. He's got, um, like, stick them on his hands yeah, or yeah. something. Those are that, incredible so catches. It's, it's more about, like, for, for drones, it's, it's the concepts. Um, I, I do think there's an accuracy issue for sure. He's got probably got inconsistent mechanics and things like that, but it should not be a surprise. I mean, I've been I've been writing about this since the day he signed. I said you have to look back to high school, like his senior year. He only completed forty nine percent of his passes, right? So he was never going to come in here and be some sort of guy who's going to complete sixty or sixty five percent of his passes and be highly efficient and things like that. Um, for him, it's about the coaching staff running the right system. Um, making sure he throws it an appropriate amount of times, not asking him to do, execute things in the passing game that he's not ready to do yet. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I don't think it's, I don't think coming out with a gunslinger mentality and trying to throw it five years first six plays is the right way to hire, uh, to handle Kyron Jones. I thought he played great against Pitt because I thought he was used properly um, from, from start to finish in that game. I thought he was used properly. Um, Obviously, Florida State is a much different animal from a talent standpoint. But uh, it's just how the game began for Virginia Tech offensively with their game plan of to come out throwing. That's that's the only thing that really bothered me. Like the drones numbers, they, they don't surprise me because like we knew from the very beginning that he was very much behind as a passer. And I think everybody looked, oh, four star, you know, he's going to be great. But that's not how it works. And he's... He has a long way to go as a passer, and you know, if only one wide receiver caught a pass. Like, like he, I don't think I'm not even. I think even Hendon Hooker, when he became the starter, you know, part of the way through 2019, even he was, and he wasn't very advanced at that time. But even he, I think, was maybe a little bit more advanced than, than Drones is right now. I guess you can argue that point. Uh, but. On that top, on that thing, only one wide receiver caught a pass. Mm -hmm. Like, Tech has. Tech upgraded the wide receiver room. That was a big emphasis in the offseason. But if if the wide receivers aren't producing, so to speak, do you consider playing Malachi Thomas and Bayshall Tootin at the same time? In certain packages, I guess you could. They did um, have both of them out there a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to go back and look at the breakdown of that. Um, I, th I think 
you originally thought you were going to have a wide receiver core of Ali Jennings, Jalen Lane, and, da- and Daquan Felton, and and I think what with Wells being a you know a much more advanced passer than Jones at this point, I think that was a lot of the original quarterback decision. I thought Virginia Tech coming in, the, their position of strength was at wide receiver on offense. So how do you get how do how do you get to the point where you're able to best utilize your position of strength? Well, that's with Wells passing. Right, so he's the starting quarterback when when you had those three wide receivers, and that was the best way to have the most efficient offense. Now you've only got two of them, um, so it, it it sheds some some doubt on that to a certain extent. Um, but at the same time, you've still got two of the three, and you've still got Gosnell who improved quite a bit last year. You know, you've you've still got oh my gosh, uh, Lofton who's a very experienced, he's a junior at, at this point. So you've still got a couple of tight ends that have caught passes for you. Um, so there's still enough weapons out there to throw for more than 104 yards. Um, and they targeted Felton. I yeah, mean, they tried that work. play up the sideline. Right. And if, if Drones has seen him coming across the, the middle on that flea flicker, you know, the receiver stats look a lot different because I, I do think he had a step on that guy there. So, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes the stats end up that way. It's not like it was the intent of the offense, though. Uh, Andy, Chris, in your time covering Virginia Tech, can you remember a time where Virginia Tech has had such difficulty with ru- like with run fits? 20, like I, I, 2018. 2018. Yeah. No, 2018, they had a lot of trouble with them, don't get me wrong. They also had some issues where they were playing a couple defensive linemen. i got to forget their names. But these guys ended up transferring and being backups at FCS schools. Right. And Tech was actually playing them 50 to 100 snaps that year as part of the rotation. Like, that's not an issue this year. Like, that was a huge talent issue. And I'm not saying this is the most talented defense in the world or anything like that. But you've got a guy like Alan Tisdale who's in his sixth year and started a lot of football games and all of a sudden doesn't know where to go. And and Mike is a different position than Will, but it's not so different that he should have taken this much of a step back. So I think I think there, there are deeper issues at play like I don't think there's a talent issue per se with like Jaden Keller I mean he's a strong guy he's a good athlete everything like that Um, I don't think there's a natural inside linebacker on this team though I I think you've got a lot of guys who were safety types in high school and even a guy like Kelly Lawson I I think Kelly Lawson's best position in this scheme would actually be Sam you get somebody with his athleticism on the wide side of the field um, you get a wide receiver or a tight end generally blocking him as opposed to an offensive guard. Um, and he can use his athleticism out there in the open field. Uh, I think that would be his best position. Um, but if there, but at that point, like, where do you put Keonta Jenkins and then you block Caleb Woodson and everything like that? Um, that but they've got to have a serious rethink in the offseason about their linebackers. Like, Okay, you need a natural Mike. So you've got Ace and Stevens, who's red shirt, and you got George Balance, who looks like he's probably going to red shirt. I think you go with those two guys at Mike and bring in a transfer portal Mike and let those three guys fight it out for the Mike position. Everybody else, Virginia Tech has tried at Mike this year. They're not only not good enough, they're not approaching good enough. And you would have thought you would see if if, if some of those guys had been showing progress then you would say, okay, yeah, they're going to continue to show progress and we'll feel good about it going into next year. But they haven't shown any progress at all. And you don't you, you don't want to – you hate you would hate to, like, give up on guys early, so to speak. But this is the area era of the transfer portal. The James Anderson is of the world that, like, didn't really learn to be good football players till they were redshirt juniors. Those are great stories. Most of the time, if you're not at least competent as a redshirt sophomore at the position you're playing, you know, you're probably not going to be. So it would be a risk to, like, go into next year with, like, Jaden Keller as your Mike linebacker. I think he would have a better chance of playing, like, the wheel spot or something like that, but not at Mike. But, yeah, they, they, need, they need to figure something out at their linebacker spots. Who plays what position and who are they going to target in the portal at Mike because – you know, unless they feel like Ace and Stevens or George Balance is ready to start as a redshirt freshman next year, like I'd be terrified going in, into next season with any of the guys that have played Mike so far this year. To their credit, when they've targeted guys or needs like that in the portal, they've done pretty well. Mm-hmm. And looking at the receivers they brought in, Tootin, Drones at quarterback, 
uh, you know, canteen uh, defensively. I think all the transfers they brought in, the scholarship transfers have <laughs> have panned out there. You know, they didn't go that route with linebacker. They maybe tried to get by with what they could and, and get a well, guy coming in for free. On, I mean, they, yeah. they tried with Stone Snyder and it just didn't work out. But I think you need to make that a high priority this offseason. I think they are an offensive line. You got to hit those two positions pretty hard because those are two pretty glaring weaknesses on this team and, still. And defensive tackle as well. Because and that, tackle because of the, the number of guys yeah. that will be graduating. I have a, a quick game I want to play. Um, Sweet. So we got a question. Halfway through the season, is Virginia Tech showing enough improvement? And then how would you specifically rate coaches on their midterm results? So I, what I want to do is from – Brent Pry to Tyler Bowen to Chris Marv, what letter grade? <laughs> oh God! If you had to give him a midseason report card, kind of like you know, what what letter grade would you would you give them just on how their unit is performing this season? And then Pry, of course. Do I get to partake? Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, go oh, ahead. Uh, Pry. Ultimately, I think <sighs> Pry's success or failure of Virginia Tech is going to come down to his coordinators. So if he has a failing grade right now, it's because it's not that he's making bad decisions right now on November or October 7th. It's that he made bad decisions in the hiring process. So, like, I don't think he's doing a better or worse job as a head coach right now than he was last year. Like, the biggest decision he makes for the football program are off-season decisions. Um, as far as the coordinators themselves go, I think it took Bowen entirely too long to understand – the type of offense tech tech needs to run like the, the the type of offense tech was running last year no matter who was at quarterback was not going to work it just wasn't going to work and took him too long to figure that out but he did figure it out so i can't give him a failing grade because he totally because it, an f would be like if they were still running the marshall offense and the rutgers offense you know r- right now and last year's offense right now but they've, they've switched that up to their credit so i can't give him a failing grade but i would give him a d it's crazy how much one game is changing this entire conversation. If we had this conversation before the pit game, it would be very different than it is right now after seeing the pit game. So I guess my question is, is like this one game, can you put all your eggs in one basket and be like, yes, everything changed because of this one game. And now it's going to get a little bit better and we don't have to get like, um, they, we're just putting so much on this pit game. Oh. And pit stinks. They I mean, if you're giving a grade to pit, it's an F. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they stink yeah. at every – well, their defense has been, you know, pretty good, but they stink on everything on offense. And like, When your quarterback shifts to tight, tight end, end the week after that you play, like, that was a horrible yeah, offense. That was yeah, game. yeah, tight end, Phil You've Jacobic. got problems. <laughs> you yeah, did, you, was it you it. that tweeted Virginia Tech broke Phil Jacobic? I think, uh, will. I think Will, will tweet okay. that. No, no, okay. think, think about this. All right, that pit win. You go back to last season when Tech beat Boston College. They started out 1-0 and in the ACC. It's like they didn't look good against Old Dominion, but then, okay, you come home, you easily beat Boston College. You think the ship is righted. You had four, four turnovers against Old Dominion. That's not going to happen again. That was a fluke. Now we blew out Boston College, so it's going to be okay from here. Well, you know, not going to be a great team, probably be all right. Well, then Tech went 1-6 and six in the ACC because Boston College being so miserably bad offensively masks a lot of issues. Same quarterback. The lesson Same quarterback. is do not take beating Phil Dracovic as a sign. <laughs> right, right, the program right. is turning the corner. Exactly. So, like, but BC's offense is probably just as bad as, or excuse me, Pitt's offense. If It might be as bad. And maybe it's not quite as bad. I don't know. You're splitting hairs either way. But obviously, Tech's defense is a lot closer to the Marshall Rutgers level of run defense than it was to that pit level. So, like Marv, I, I, I they tried to go out and get a natural Mike Stone Snyder. Um, I, I wasn't quite as high on Snyder as Pry was, but he knows a lot more than linebackers about linebackers than I do. So who am I to judge? But I was happy to, I thought Snyder was going to at least be a rotational player and he is a natural Mike. So that made sense. It just didn't work out for a variety of reasons that, that, you know, no reason to get into here. But, uh, so they tried, it just didn't work. No, and they've got to, they've got to, they got to make sure like they need to cast a wide net. And they need to offer three or four natural linebackers and take the first guy who can commit. Maybe even take two of them if you really think it's it's necessary, because uh, it's too important position, obviously. Um, but I, I also think it's more to it than that. Like 
Tisdale shouldn't be playing at this lower level as a six-year player. And I know he moved from Will to Mike, but the Will still plays inside the tackle box so much. It's not like a it's a change going to Mike, and he's not a natural Mike, but it's not it shouldn't be this big of a drop off. And and Kelly Lawson was playing at a high level the last three games of last season, and he's not playing as well as he did last year. Um, so it's the fact that those guys haven't progressed or even have regressed, it seems. And Jaden Keller hasn't progressed, and McDonald hasn't progressed. Um, like at best, they're the same. At worst, it's gotten worse. I don't know how to evaluate Marv as a defensive coordinator because. First, yeah. The linebackers are so bad. The secondary's been fine. I don't think I don't look out there and say, "Oh man, he's making major mistakes schematically or with his play calling or anything like that." For the most part, I think it's fine. But like as a linebacker coach, so far, I, I'll give him a grade. Uh, I don't know, D. How could you really? You can't say it's average. But the thing is, like last year, I thought the linebacker coaching was really good. Like, Dax Holyfield made progress from his junior year to his senior year. Like, when Marv and Pry walked through the door, Dax was a much better football player. And even last year, like, Tisdale, when he came back from suspension, he really helped solidify things. Like, he, his run defense grade last year was the best of his career. Just like Dax, he made major strides. And then we saw Kelly Lawson get better as the season go along, go, went along, and he played well at the end of the last year. So you see all those players made improvements last year, but this year you're not seeing anybody make improvements. So I don't know what's happened in the offseason that, that that stopped. The one thing that changed from an outside perspective is now he's calling the plays. Maybe yeah. there is not a level of distraction, but less attention spent in that linebacker room, more attention spent. <sighs> Who knows? Overall defense. But. What do you think, Andy? What would you give Marvin Bowen? I mean, it, just based on production, you got to give him Ds, right? I mean, it's, it's not average production, if right. that's what you're calling a C. I mean, it's just the results are the results. I, I don't know how you give it much better than that. Now, you know, individually, they might have... You know, certain games they've been better in, in in other ones, but big picture, you know, you're two and four, struggling to to, to run the ball. You know, 300 yards is sometimes in question with this offense. I think, uh, yeah, D's are fair for this. I think it's a good time to tell everybody that uh, we have another sponsorship, as always. Uh, Tech Sideline is presented by First Bank and Trust Company. Check out their new Checking with Perks account that comes with cell phone protection, roadside assistance, fuel savings, deals and discounts, and so much more. Visit firstbank.com to learn about this great new account for students. All right, almost time to wrap things up today, but I want to kind of check in as I do every week with you guys, looking at this schedule, felt like that pick game changed a lot of things, like we had mentioned. Um, do you see any more wins? Looking at the <laughs> landscape of the rest of the ACC, I'd have to say Wake Forest, Syracuse, Boston College, and NC State and Virginia are all beatable. I don't feel any differently than I did before the Florida State game. Okay. Um, I think I think what we've learned is the run defense is as bad as we thought it was before the Florida State game. Um, but I also don't think that there's like – as many like power running teams, like with as much running back talent left on the schedule as we saw against Florida State, as we saw with the kid at Marshall who's really good, and and Ju even the Rutgers back. Juwar Jordan's very good, but he's more of a speed back. It's right. not really a power offense, but his numbers are crooked. Right. Now that being said, I'm sure whatever running back. It used to be mobile quarterbacks that scared Tech fans. Like, uh, who, which quarterbacks are going to be this week that's going to break his career rushing record? Well, now it's running back. Which re which running back is going to break his his rushing his own personal rushing record? Sometimes it's both. Sometimes yeah. it's both. That's a bad problem. Yeah, to have. yeah. It's now so you look at the schedule, and I mean, it's all with the exception of Louisville, who looks pretty good right now, coming off that Notre Dame win. Every team is middle to lower half of the ACC. I mean, that's where tech is that that's the range that they're in that's why i said you know the florida state game doesn't matter that's not a game that you're going to win anyway wake forest this week where i think wake open is a three-point favorite maybe it's down to one somewhere somewhere in that range i mean that is a winnable game and that is a game that if you win it it shows progress for this program because uh you know you have not you didn't beat wake the last time they played them that's a program that has been better than you in recent years has played in an acc championship game more recently than you have. So, uh, you know, this is where the program is at right now. That's who you have to judge yourself against is the Wake Forest and the Syracuse 
as and the uh, you know uh, NC, NC State. states. Uh, you know, you would like to not think you're in that UVA and Boston College range, but maybe reality is more towards that than the other. So these are the games that you have to play and show progress and win, and they are winnable. It's there. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can win enough 50-50 coin tosses over the second half of the season to go four and two, but I wouldn't completely rule it, rule it out. I mean, this is this is where they have to make some hay with this schedule. It's one and a half, by the way. Is um, it one and a half? It's now? one and a half right now. Tech is one and a half point dogs. At dogs home. at home. Yeah, against uh, Wake Forest. I think uh, I think that Tech will, Tech will probably beat Syracuse now. <laughs> I'm, God, okay. you hit so down after two losses. Yeah, yeah but forty this, to seven you, against Carolina. You guys don't. Understand. Carolina is Carolina's rolling. Good. Yes, Car- Car- I agree. Like, like, I think Carolina's, Carolina's defense is good enough. You see, to hold Carolina's, Syracuse Carolina's to only seven o- opened as a three and a half point favorite against Miami. Wow. At well, home. I mean, you have to think at the end of the game that. If Miami's up, they just won't take the knee. And that'll give <laughs> North Carolina a chance. The greatest coaching malpractice oh in the history God. of coaching, possibly. Yeah, Mario that's, Cristobal. That's my goodness. Bad. I think that Syracuse is so banged up, and they they do this thing where they lose to Clemson, and they'll, then they'll lose five straight. Who, who right? Does, I think Tech's going to beat Syracuse. Who do, on who do they play this week? Syracuse this week. Yeah. Syracuse at Florida State. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And then they and then they're at Tech on a they Thursday. Got Clemson, they're all they got Clemson, then, yeah. North Carolina, Florida State in a row. Yeah. That's brutal. Yeah, and then Virginia you want to talk about not they're, judging they're, they're a team by. by its toughest opponents? That yeah. might be a case. Yeah, there. yeah, that's they right. They still got Garrett Trader. He that, still runs the ball really that, well. They still got Lakin Allen. He's a good running. He's back. He's an electric running back too. I the mean, defense is so depleted right now, though. It, what what is Tech's offense going to yeah, be? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's going to be a fun Thursday. Night. I think it'll All be right, a good so, game. Okay, so so I would have to say North Carolina. I think is actually legit this year. They played very well, so I wouldn't look at that forty to seven. Go, oh man, Syracuse is just. Awful. Gio, if I was a Syracuse fan, here's how I, I look at Virginia People are going to get so mad in the uh, comments. I, I would sit here and say, look look at, it. gosh, I guess four of Virginia Tech's last five football games. They've scored 17 points, 16 points, 17 points, 38 points, 17 points. With a kick return for a touchdown. With a kick return for a Good touchdown. Point. So with Pitt being the one outlier, this team can't score 20 points on a weekly basis. If you're Syracuse, you're like, get to 20. You might win. You all have a good chance to win. But certainly if you get in the upper 20s and you hit 30, you're almost guaranteed to win against Virginia Tech. That's how I would look at it if I was a Syracuse fan. Not a bad way to look at it. David's got something for us. Quick, Andy, I wanted to ask you. You were there, um, and this was kind of talked about on Twitter. Now, I was, to for clarification, behind a p- double panes of glass in like a penalty box in the press box. So I felt like so not a part of the atmosphere. Like we had the effects in the headset, but it – it was like you were like listening to it on a headset. I didn't, I couldn't like feel the atmosphere. But I you would say, say that I could hear you crystal clear coming through those double well, panes of glass. Yeah, Geo's voice projects very well when it's going there. So I, that's terribly embarrassing. The, I'm the exciting touchdown plays, we could get the full play by play coming through the glass there. That's like I, I unfortunately when you told me that I was like, oh great, now <laughs> now it's in like the back of my head. But um, anyways, I wanted to ask you. I really think like Lane Stadium has a better atmosphere. Granted, that was a day game than Florida State. Like that was re- like Lane Stadium is really something. Lane Stadium is. I, I will say that 2018 game, were you at the 2018 game? That was game? not, yeah. But that was a really electric game. crowd. Okay. I mean, it was night game, season opener. They had not gone into their, you know, six years of depression for the program being just awful. They were excited for that Willie Taggart debut. That was a really electric crowd there. And then they went out and laid the egg of all eggs against what was not a great Virginia Tech team. So I have seen better atmospheres at Doe Campbell. Uh, you know, day game, 20, left 20, at half. 24 point favorite against a team that you're probably going to beat. You get up big early and it's just like, okay, this is probably just going to be a, a cakewalk here the rest from of the game. Florida, even from, Florida the State's, go. from Florida State's perspective, you're ranked fifth in the country. You're playing Virginia Tech at home. That's no different than like playing Duke or Pitt. Right. I mean, this is not, yeah. yeah from they a just State, you don't my, look at they, Virginia Tech the same way if you're a Florida but, State fan. But they've already played f- LSU this year. They've already played Clemson. I mean, yeah. this is a nothing game to yeah. them. They're waiting yeah. for Miami and whoever else they have the rest of the season. But you're number five in the country, and there were still seats open. Yeah. You know? It's a big stadium. It, it's, it's a bigger 79. stadium. 79. Yeah, it's pretty big. Don't get me wrong. But 
They were um, actually probably waiting out at the ticket office before the game trying to get in. Like you were? <laughs> Based yeah. on how long we had to wait for our tickets. It yeah. wasn't did the you get the apology operation. email? I did get the apology that was, email. That was unnecessarily that was kind of them. It was yes. appreciated. Yes. No, I cannot come. You have been covering games much longer than me. I was just grateful to be there in the first place. So when I saw an apology email, I was like, no, no need for that. You gave me a spot to be. So Florida, you, know. you know what Florida State's waiting for? They're waiting for Duke to come in mid-October. <laughs> Duke, yeah. Duke's number 17. Yeah. We have a Riley <laughs> Leonard. Is banged up. Yeah, he is. It's not that's, the that's same. Tough. Um, but yeah, look, back to Virginia Tech. Yeah, so many winnable games. Ding. So many uh, winnable games left on the schedule. Um, because the, the Tech got a good draw with schedule. There's no Miami. There's North, no North Carolina. There's no Duke. So Clemson. No Clemson. So ma- imagine wow. if if you're sitting here at two and four and you're looking at the rest of the season and you're like, well, we got to play. Louisville, that's out. We, which we already do, and then you got, but you got to play Carolina. Ugh, then you got to play Clemson. You know, it could be a lot worse. You could, you, two, could, you could be sitting here at two and four, and knowing that you had no chance to make a ball. And two of the row games are UVA and BC. Right, it's yeah. not like you right. know, marching into the the worst stadium you have to play. Right. You avoided playing in Raleigh, and Raleigh's a fun place to play, especially like last year we played there on a Friday night. It's not easy. We saw the Louisville game last week. It's not easy to play in Raleigh on a night game. So you kind of avoided that too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a favorable schedule um, the whole way through. There's no FCS team on the schedule anywhere, but outside of Florida State, Virginia Tech hasn't played anything better than a mediocre, completely mediocre football team so far. Which is why if they don't get to a bowl game there this year with that schedule yeah. and the way the team set up, I think it's a, a pretty big disappointment. Yeah, I would agree. I don't know the exact number, but I remember coming into the season, it was rated by ESPN's metrics or whatever as actually one of the easiest Power 5 schedules yeah. in the country. I mean, that's an accurate statement. So like, uh, You even look around and like, like Rutgers... I think their defense is good. They've got a good running back, but man, they're so bad offensively that at best they're a mediocre football team. And then Marshall's kind of similar. That they finally scored some points. That was a, I was never expecting that final score in the Marshall <laughs> NC State game. <laughs> that was but, a track meet. But but like Marshall, like they've got a lot of experience and they have a winning program. But it's not like they're uh, NC State's a mid level ACC team, and they and they beat Marshall. And so Marshall is at best a mid level. ACC level program and tech loss to them, you know. So and you got Purdue's a, not very good. You got a break with Pitt because yeah. Pitt has been much Terrible. better than this year. They've, they've been as bad as they've been lately. Exactly. So the the schedule is there and has been there the whole season. Hey, Rutgers is the only team this season to cover against Michigan. Granted, they were supposed to lose by twenty four and a half. They lost that game by twenty four. So they just barely covered. But that is the only team to cover against Michigan. Who just looks like, like they Virginia can win Tech against Florida State, that was big a, line, and they just got. Right That's in true. There underneath just, it. just got right in there. Um, I'll, uh, David, you had something for us in the fourth chair, and then I got one more question. Yeah, I was just going to say, if if this schedule was the ACC Coastal, like if there were still divisions in the oh, conference, man. yeah, Virginia Tech would be toast. Tech's <laughs> probably like going down to Miami and going, you know, because Tech went to Duke and Chapel Hill last year. Right. So Tech's got them at home, but Tech's probably going down to Miami. Has to go to, teams jo- are good to Georgia year. Tech. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, Georgia Tech just beat... A, a, a ranked Miami team, uh, like, but Georgia Tech is not good sure. But still. Virginia they Tech pulled it out. But like, they're at like least still not a good Virginia team. Tech is like, if this was a coastal division, Virginia Tech is probably the third worst team in the coastal. The only two teams that are worse are Pitt and UVA. That's not a, a group you want to be in. Tech's probably on level playing field, but Georgia Tech, and then it's Duke, Miami, North Carolina above. Tech doesn't have to play any of any of them. Like, like, I think you know, coming into the season. I think we all said like five of uh, five wins was probably achievable and six wins would be a success considering where the program was last year, how much talent it brought in. We understood this was year two, but like tech has opportunities left like that. This is not a gauntlet. This is your hardest game left is Louisville on the road. You have to, um, I mean, maybe I should say the hardest game is Boston College on the road because nobody <laughs> nobody can win up there. But like, if if you're you know you have three road games left at Louisville, at Boston College, and at UVA, you have NC State at home, and NC State looked a little bit better, but NC State's dealing with its own quarterback situation. You got a banged up Syracuse, and you got a Wake Forest team that lost by like twenty to Bo- to Georgia Tech. Like this is not a good schedule. 
That oh. like so if Virginia Tech only wins like a game or two, that's bad. That's a bad sign. Like Tech should win. Tech should win probably two or three at least. If not, like Tech has a chance probably to win four games on this schedule. The problem is that the way that Tech's playing right now, and I'm not saying the Florida State game. I'm saying like how Tech played in the first six games as a whole. You know, if the, if the offensive coordinator keeps coming out and putting Tech in situations where the Hokies are throwing the ball when they should be running the ball, when they should be playing to their strengths, and even though none of these teams necessarily have good rushing attacks and Tech allows a run of 50-plus yards, like, Tech is there, and then it's like you take one step forward, three steps back every single week. And, like, this is... A, this is the, these last six games, I think, will will define a lot for Virginia Tech this year. Yeah, I think they dug themselves a hole early when you lose to Purdue, Rutgers, and Marshall in back-to-back games. Like, you dig yourself in a hole that's really difficult to come out of. And that's why the pit win was so important, because you don't win that game. There's no way you dig your way out of it. So here we are on uh, winnable games, um, losable games also. Oh, yeah. No doubt. All right, I ask you this last question before we ask you what's coming up on TSL and let everyone go for the day. Is Florida State, you know, looking like number four in the country? Honestly, I was not super impressed, and my 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 line for that is, one, watch a lot of other college football as well. They look nothing like Michigan and, and some of these other uh, top-tier teams. Georgia this week blew out Kentucky and looked really, really good. And, and – to tandem up with that, they really don't look like like when Clemson was in its heyday, Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence led teams like that was a team that was like, man, you almost felt like you had no chance. Yeah. And Florida State didn't look like that. I think they look like that in spurts. As it turned out, you know, they scored a bunch of points on LSU, but everybody's scoring a bunch of points on LSU. Um, I, I think uh, it's it's odd that like, like the Wake Forest defense actually played better against the, the Clemson offense than the Florida State the defense did um i think they have shown spurts of being awesome like i thought they i thought that when they came out in the first quarter against tech they really looked like they were charged up and they were really dialed in and they dominated that game and i think just i think they came out with their mentality was better um but they have not been able to sustain that mentality over four quarters of football so far this year i think if they can do that then they're in that conversation not with georgia because I think it's Georgia and kind of everybody else, but uh, Michigan might be. Man, maybe. Michigan's yeah, you, 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 yeah you, Michigan you, hasn't you played make, anybody. Yeah, that you that, can that's like true. It's like make you, that yeah. determination. Yeah. Well, so we'll see. But uh, I, I mean, I certainly think they have a shot at, at the third and, and fourth spots for sure. But like, and I think I think they're in that conversation. But I think most of those teams you can look at and say, yeah, they could be there, but there's this little issue, and then there's another issue for another team. They're in the conversation. Um, they still got to play Miami. Do they play North Carolina? They do not. They do not play North Carolina. Duke, uh, though. Duke. Yeah, yeah if, but without if, Riley if, Leonard. If, if Riley Leonard's out, then, then that would, yeah. With um, FSU, I think the defense didn't overwhelm me. Correct. I, you know, I feel like you look at Michigan and Georgia and some of those other top teams, they have a defense that can just snuff you out in the second. I mean, you just can't do anything. On that, and you know, Tech could do some things. Now they have an offense that can, you know, put up points and light up a scoreboard, and certainly can, you know, go to toe to toe with anybody that they play against. But I just have not seen the same level of performance on the defense that let BC get back in the game, and LSU had a bunch of yards, and you know, Clemson, I think, uh, still moved the ball pretty well in that game, and, and Tech did it to a degree last week. Uh, I think that's the thing that's holding me back from saying FSU is in that, you know, they'll be in the playoff conversation because I think the schedule sets up for them and they're a very good team and they're doing it. But I just I don't quite put them in that top tier of teams quite yet. You know, I wouldn't shock me if they if they won out and made the playoffs. But like if they have to play like a Georgia or a Michigan in the first game, I, I don't I don't think they would end well for them. Yeah, we've seen a lot of playoff semifinals end in, end in blowouts. Last year was pretty good, though. Uh, what's coming up this week on TSL? Obviously, we'll hit you on Thursday with a podcast to preview Wake Forest. But what else you guys? Yeah, got? you know, normal stuff. Uh, Tristan Raish will have his officiating column as usual, which is always a good read from the eyes of a trained official. Um, as a normal media week. I, normal I me- I'll, I'll do a mailbag this week. Okay. I didn't do one okay. last week, so okay. that'll be Yeah, and, uh, you know, so uh, Brandon Patterson, I'll have a couple articles. I'll have my preview. I'll have an inside the numbers. 
pretty normal week of content. And then next week we'll have to change it up a little bit week though with the bye week. So that'll be the, the challenge. Although with basketball starting soon, then even the even the bye week won't even be like a rest week for us. It's like oh, now basketball season starts. You got to double up. <laughs> right, right. Awesome. Well, we're going to talk to Robbie Baran on our Triumph Spotlight. Be uh, on the lookout for that on Wednesday. But till Thursday when we talk to you and preview Wake Forest. For Andy Bitter, for David Cunningham, for Nick Brown, for Chris Coleman, I'm Giovanni Heater saying so long from Blacksburg. We'll see you on Thursday.